All this national motocross action is proudly brought to you by TRP Distributors, Cannabis Energy Drink, and their associate sponsors. Welcome to the oldest motorsport club in South Africa in Thunder Valley in Maritzburg, and it's round four of the TRP and Cannabis Energy Drink Motocross Championships. It's been a long break, and all of these youngsters and the older competitors are looking forward to getting out onto the track, but I'm sure they weren't looking forward to the tricky and treacherous conditions that have happened overnight. Non-stop rain and straight into some very snotty conditions, which are basically going to make it very difficult to try and spot these motorcycles throughout the day's racing. We've been kicking off with all of our junior categories in this first show, starting things out with the 65 cc's as they start to make their way out into the circuit. But as you can see, even in the warm-up, it's not going to be a good day's racing. It's going to be a very tricky day's racing. Big ruts have started to form already. There's a lot of brake bumps out there and lots of mud to contend with. And it's going to make it even more difficult for these riders to try and keep upright, especially the juniors, because they always take a huge amount of strain, particularly when the conditions are not ideal. Not ideal for our TV crew either, or for the live commentator Len van der Westhuizen, but let's catch up with him and find out what his thoughts are on the day and what these riders are going to have to do to stay upright and stay in contention. Certainly challenging times here. It's uh, one goes back in the years. Uh, this track there, uh, unless they've had lots and lots of sawdust put down into the soil and churned up there in preparation there, it'll be very difficult there. That sand will keep churning up there. And of course, the, the traction will be minimized. But the guys that are looking at them so far, they're including the 65s that have gone through their practice, they're managing it okay, so not too bad at the moment. It's still rideable, the 1.8k circuit there at the moment. We've got the high school kids out there, and they're thriving, they're absolutely loving it there, throwing those 1 to 5s around. So at the moment, it's got to be said there, although we've had rain right through the night there, it's tricky, but uh, the guys are seem to be handling it. But we wait and see how things uh, materialize during the course of the day. I don't know how much better they're going to get, Len. I can tell you it's not looking good out there at this stage. The youngsters on the 65 cc's and the 50 cc's are going to take a lot of strain with these big ruts that are formed. You can see already just in the practice sessions how difficult it's been. Time to get a coffee quickly before we get into racing, and we're going to start things up with the 65 cc's. A big battle expected at the front end of this field because there has been some incredible racing in the first three rounds. Blade Tilly, Aidan Henley all at the front end, and look, look out as well for Cruz Martin. Sven Larsson has been up there as well. See whether or not they're going to be able to do it now as we go into green flag conditions and get ready for the start as these guys move up into the gates for their heat. <laughs> this is what they're trying to do. Keep warm, keep dry, keep uh, the mud out of your eyes. Let's see who's going to have what it takes down towards turn one. Bridgestone corner. And who's going to get the whole shot in these very tricky conditions? Right, we're ready to go. The prep salt boys are going to be working hard after this. But let's see what's going to happen now for this race and the 15 second board changes to five. Ladies jumping out of the way or making them out of the gates. Oh, someone stuck in the gates there. But as they head towards turn one, it's sideways. And there are some bikes about to get out of shape there big time. Blade Tilly is the one rider who's gone down the championship leader. And look at that. Larson goes to try and avoid him. Unfortunately, clips another rider and takes them out. I think Daniel Brindley might be in there as well. But at the front end, let's see who's got what it takes now to lead things out at this stage. Oh, good start from the 4-2. You can see uh, Chris Brindley just trying to get away. Oh, coming through the field rapidly, though. Trying to pick up on those numbers as they go into the muddy sections, going over their builder jump, down towards the cannabis turn, coming through the TRP section as well. They're great, but are riding. And it looks like our uh, crasher has actually got up. So we'll keep an eye on the progress that Blade Tilly's able to do. Aiden Henning going to be coming along for the ride as well. But at this point in time, it's Chris Brindley who leads things out. He's just trying to get away from the rest of this pack. Brody Bircher up there too. He unfortunately was also one of the riders that went down. So a bit of a crash there for the local man. He would have been definitely in for a chance to be at the front end. And there you can see the guys just battling to get through. Oh, nice move there from Daniel Brindley. Just trying to avoid the, the rider who's gone down. But this is what it's all about for the 65s. Can you imagine what the 50s are going to be like if the 65s are taking this much strain? Not easy at all. Blake Frost is back up and riding as well. Just saw the 29 bike in the background there. Slowly but surely, lead is, looks like lead has changed. Yes, the lead has changed there. So it looks like Chris Brindley's dropped back into second place. Yeah, look up the road, is that... Uh, there, right on well, third place at this point in time is Blade Tilly. So he's slowly but surely making his way through, and conditions haven't really affected his ability, that's for sure. 22 coming through there, Nickel Smith. Also a man who normally runs at the front end. Begins, oh, that's his. He's running at the front right now. That is the new leader. So Nickel Smith is at the front, and he now controls things there from the front end. 19 coming through there, Riley Rocha, and there comes Tilly. Wow. Blade Tilly just eating up the pack. Slowly but surely made his way through up to now. Fourth place overall. 518, that's 418. I beg your pardon, that's Cruz Martin. Cruz Martin with a bit of a problem. He's been able to get back up. Fortunately, some dads out there helping out to get the bikes back up and running. 
But you can see, where do you go? Where is the line? That inside line is the only line down into the OGO corner. Until he's at the front now. It's taking him less than about a lap and a half to get to the front end. Brilliant riding from him. Riley Roker now up in a second by the looks of things and uh, fighting hard there with Aiden Henley. Watch out for Casey Tilly coming through the field as well. Oh, problems. Roker's made a mistake. That's going to give an opportunity uh, to the other two riders to catch him. Yeah, it's going to be very close. Very, very close indeed. Sven Larsen also making up some ground now. After having go gone down earlier on, he's going to have to work even harder to try and stay up with a chance of getting to that top, top five. It's where you want to be. The 51 bike, Aiden Henley coming around the outside. That's a move around Casey Tilly, possibly up into third place. Here's your leader. Brilliant stuff here from Blade Tilly. Just keeping it upright. In fact, staying up on those pegs as much as possible. Trying to make the bike do the work as opposed to the body. They're on the sideline being told, think about it. Don't make any crucial mistakes right now because that could be costly. Who do you think that was? Good idea. <laughs> if you could spot a number, you're better than me. But it's not easy out there. And I'm not quite sure how these guys are actually getting around the track. They're taking the wide line there. Maybe we'll get a number this time. Yes, I think it was 418 Cruz Martin. So Cruz Martin just taking a slightly different line through that OGO corner. The lines that this man is finding, no one else is. Hey, Tilly just eating up the rest of the pack of riders and doing a superb job of staying upright after a small incident at the front. That was basically just coming into turn one and finding just a cross rut there that caught him out. Put him down. He had two riders go down with him, but he got straight back up. And as I said, about a lap and a half later, was at the front and has not been bedded since. Casey Tilly slowly but surely making his way now up into the top five. He has got Evan Frost and Daniel Brindley just behind him. No one is going to catch this man, though. He is absolutely in his element. You can see yellow flags waving in the background, so it means another rider is down. Is that Sven Larsen again? It is. Svenny going down again. He's had a tough day in the saddle. Well, out of it, most of it. Most of the time he's been out the saddle as opposed to on it. Slowly but surely, we're seeing Aiden Henley. Look at Aiden Henley absolutely eating through the field as well. He's just found a special rhythm there. And he's now moved up to second. Henley up into second place, moving ahead now of Frost and of Riley Roker. So some fantastic riding from those guys. Loving the fact that they are not giving up here con considering the conditions are so treacherous. These little 65 guys are uh, built of something special. When you're on a bigger bike and you've got slightly bigger wheels, it makes it even difficult when you're on that size motorcycle. But when you're on a small bike with a lot less power and some tiny wheels to play on, you've got to have your wits about you. And that's exactly what these top three have done. So your leader is Tilly. Right on his tail, well, as much as close as he can be. Second place is Aiden Henley. And it's Blake Frost who's now moved up into the three spot. Some good battles expected to the line, though, because it's not done just yet there for that three spot, as you can see. But you've got to find the right lines. Check it, flag is on standby. I'll tell you something, this is a superb run here from Blade Tilly. He will maintain that red number plate going into the next round at Chestnut Hill. What a day in the saddle there for him. Blade Tilly taking the overall as well ahead of Aiden Henley. It's Blake Frost in third. Riley Roker there in fourth place, beating out Casey Tilly, Evan Frost, Daniel Brindley, and Cruz Martin, the top eight. Join us off the break for more action from Thunder Valley. Welcome back to the Peter Maritzburg Motocross Club down in Maritzburg. And I can tell you something, conditions have not changed. We thought we might get a little bit of sunshine at some point in the day, but the rain has stuck around and it looks like it's here for the entire day. And it's going to mean that uh, these boys are going to have to fight hard now in the 85 cc's and pro minis combined. Five second board about to drop. Gates are going to drop as well. Stand by for who's going to get the whole shot. Heading down towards turn one. What a start out of the gates. So you can see just how hard they're pushing. And it's going to be a big fight on there with Trey Cox. Local man trying to squeeze through. In fact, he's actually got to the, the whole shot position and leads things out. He's the only one with a clean number board at this point in time, so we'll hopefully be able to keep an eye on him. 19 coming through there as well, slowly but surely making his way to the front. In fact, that's Neil van der Feifer. It's number 18, beg your pardon, as he goes through there. Good start from him. But you can see, look at the riders having to take evasive action as they're just running wide. There's just no way there's traction out there. They're putting the wheels into the ruts and they're just getting cross-rutted. The wheel comes out and you just start sliding to the outside of the track. Trey Cox using a little bit of local knowledge here. He's probably ridden this track on a few occasions when it's been this tricky. Ryan Adler is up to second. Brilliant start there. Absolutely brilliant stuff as well from the Ridgeway Race Bar rider. He's up in the second place trying to close down on Cox. Neil van der Feifer just behind him starting to close things down. And then it's Jordan van Drake. Watch out for the 747 in the background. They're down in Thunder Valley at the moment along the riverbed. And Trey Cox now trying to open up a little bit of a margin. Already going to the, to the tear-off system. He goes to that rip strip and tries to get some clear vision. As 100% goggles working really nicely for him as he goes through there. Look at the gap he's opened up now. He's trying to get away there from the hard charging Ryan Adler and Neil van der Feifer. Keep an eye out as well for Tristan DeRoe. He'll be looking to come through another local man. 
Oh, problems. Cox has gone down. Cox makes a mistake into the Gurney turn. And there comes Adler. Adler going to try and avoid him. Just gets in the inside. And Funafefe goes with him. So Cox making a big mistake there. And he's dropped it again. Oh, difficult enough when you try and pick up a bike in the dry. When it's wet, your, your gloves get all dirty. You get mud on the glove. It just slips out of your hand. There's not much you can do. Coxie is back up, but Trey's got a huge mountain to climb now. I think we picked up on uh, the number five bike, the 85cc junior leader there, Tyler Peterson, coming through as well. But here is the leader overall on the Ridgeway Race Bar, Husqvarna, and Ryan Adler doing everything right to try and stay at the front. Just looking to see what the gap is like now between himself as he goes onto the high line and through the mud and uh, finds a relatively good line through there, I've got to say. Followed very closely there by the uh, factory uh, Husqvarna of Fun of Faithfa, Neil Fun of Faithfa. A very, very talented youngster. And then, as I said, that's the far bike of Peterson. Then it's Cox. Cox coming through there for fourth place overall. Good recovery from him. Behind that looks like it's the uh, 200 bike there of Matthew Correa. So Matty Correa also doing a superb start and coming through the pack. 39 in the house. Good stuff from him too as they come through there. That's Tristan Murray. Just giving us a little bit of slow-mo through the mud. You can see just how deep that mud is. Well, looks like we've got a battle on here for the lead. Fanafefa has got Adler well within his sights. And a big fight there between the two Husky riders. Just finding those lines. They're basically just trying to stay within a rhythm that keeps them all together. Oh, little mistake there from Adler. Just got caught on one of the ruts. Might have slowed him up slightly. Is that going to give a sniff there and possibility of a change-up? No, not just yet. I think Fanafefa is quite happy just to sit with a bit of a mud gap. So he doesn't get too much roost off that front bike. He'll wait to pounce a bit later on. Or if something goes wrong. Adler keeping it all together. You can see riders in the background going down as well. Usual contenders of the front end winner would be really dry would be, of course, Jake Van Skuren and Pullen. Those guys in the uh, 85cc juniors have been down on a few occasions already. You can see yellow flags waving in the background still. Great ride so far from Ryan Adler. He certainly has stepped up here big time. And he's definitely becoming a big threat here to our usual contenders. And in tricky conditions like this, I didn't expect to see Ryan Adler there. But he definitely has turned himself around in terms of visibility. Here we go. Cox up into third place again. He's got through on Peterson. Peterson still leads out, though. And looking for a chance now to try and win things out. There you go, Matty Carra. Carra doing a great job for second place in the juniors at this point in time. 85cc juniors. Making it a bit more difficult for them with the slightly smaller wheels. Oh, oh man, look at that. Oh, I was going to say, you came out of there a little bit too hot. And I think that was uh, Thor Johnson who just got it out of shape. Or could have been uh, Andrew Fenter as well. The two riders very similar in terms of their livery, but how do you see the livery right now? I mean, you can only see the side of the bike. Here's a change-up possibly for the lead. Yes, what a move. Inside line. And Neil Fanafefa just shows Ryan Adler that the inside line is probably the better one to be on. Look at how difficult that is. As strong as you are and as fit as these riders are, when the conditions are like this, to try and pick up a motorcycle is so difficult. You've got to take your hats off to these guys. They are giving it everything they can. Adler still in second place. Fanafefa now with a small advantage for the lead. But Adler hasn't given, given up just yet. Oh, and that's why. A small mistake like that could be costly as well. And Fanafefa even starts to make them. It's not easy conditions here at all. And oh, there's the number five bike. That is the leader of the juniors, Tyler Peterson, with the problem as well. So uh, he could possibly lose his lead there. He had Caden Visa and Matty Carrera right on his tail looking for a way through. Let's see whether or not he's able to get that bike going again. Top two just maintaining a nice little rhythm and maintaining the gap between themselves as well. Slowly but surely coming through here. You can see Cody Goosen and Tristan Murray. But uh, Adler just hasn't had an answer. Since he lost the lead, he's had to sit behind the 18 bike there. Oh, 37, Dre Cox goes down, trying to use that inside line. Not quite ideal, but uh, Coxie gets it up, fortunately, relatively quickly, and gets himself back up into contention. He's made up a lot of ground to close in on the top two. And then a small mistake like that drops him back. Has to do it all over again. And doing it all over again as you come over the asterisk turn. This is Jordan van Vake coming into the pit box area. I think he's looking for some goggles. No, oh, no, he's been sent straight back out again. I don't think there were any goggles available. You think it's difficult enough to ride in these conditions without goggles. You've got to try and ride with them when they're all completely mudded up like that man's is. Oh, going down the 123 bike. Not the way you want to be doing it. Ashton Martin just getting it out of shape there, unfortunately, and uh, straight into a face full of mud. <laughs> Running wide, yeah. Is that the 7 bike? Yes, it is. Caden Visa. That is our new leader, I think. Yes, it is. That is the new leader in the 85cc juniors, taking a wide line and trying to stay out of trouble. This has hit the front, Correa is now second, and Tyler Peterson, I don't think, was able to get that bike going again, or it took him a long time to get it going again. So the chequered flag is about to come out. The win in the 85cc juniors goes to Caden Visa, and across the line, Neil Fanafefa will be taking the win in the Pro Minis.
There's Visa. I didn't even realize he's taken the win. Bonafaefa takes it from Adler and Cox and Jordan van Veek in fourth. It was Visa from Correa, Fenter and Kasim Hassim finishing up in the top four for the juniors. Join us off the break for more action from Thunder Valley here in Maritzburg. Welcome back to Thunder Valley in round four of the TRP and Cannabis Energy Drink National Motocross Championships. As you can see, the tre- treacherous conditions have not left us. We've really seen some big action in uh, two of our junior categories. Our final small category, of course, is the 50 cc's, And they're about to get into the thick of it. Five-second board and into turn number one. Who's going to have what it takes? Watch out for local men, Trenton Kretzman and Brody Bircher. And, of course, the boys who have been at it in the uh, high felt side of things have been Maxwell Free and Raiden Wolves, and they're all fighting hard. Look at the outside line there. I think that was Wolves. And uh, yes, look at that. Maxwell Faree going through, diving on the inside on the Cobra and getting the whole shot. So the Ridgeway Race Ball man leads things out over the local boys. I'm not quite sure what happened with Brody Bircher. Brody Bircher with a bit of an issue. Is that him down there? No, no. He's putting his hands up. I don't think that's Bircher. That's definitely a man that's gone down though. I think that possibly could be Riley Heldenace. He's crashed out there right from the word go. How's this little fight at the front end? Remember, these guys were staying on the junior track. Maybe not as rutted and as bumpy as the big senior track is. Unfortunately, they don't have to go there. But it is very slippery. You can see that uh, water lying on the top end of the circuit and making it exceptionally difficult for these guys to try and find traction. So yeah, Faree from Wolves by the looks of things. Kretzman starting to come through there rapidly as well as they come into the thick of it one more time. Up over the top. Oh, look at that sideways action in the background. Birch <laughs> trying to fend off the attack. He forced the rider wide and it was almost speedway style coming through there. Change up for the lead, yeah, possibly. Yes, there you go. Diving on the inside, looking for opportunities. And there is one opening up there slowly but surely. And it looks like there's a bit of a fight on here. I can tell you, Raiden Wolves is not giving up. And he's all over the front end fight there. Kind of what we've seen up in Gauteng in the regional championships as well. But uh, a continued fight out here once again between Maxwell Free and Raiden Wolves. Slowly but surely, though, watch out for Bircher. Bircher has just put in the fastest lap of the race so far, trying to recover after a small down. And he'll be uh, definitely in contention by the time that flag comes up. But there's still a little bit of way to go before that happens. Leader at this point. Absolutely brilliant stuff. 3.45, Raiden Wolves. He hangs on to that front end for now. You can see also running that uh, additional bit of uh, peak on him. Just trying to avoid the, the ro- roost and splash that comes up. And on his tail, charging hard, is Maxwell Free for Ridgeway Race Park. Behind that, the two local men. They are coming rapidly. Kretzman and Bircher definitely starting to close things down now on the back end of first and second place on track. So we're in a four-way fight here. Brilliant stuff. Lots of thinking come with me in the background. Here is Kretzman. He's definitely now got uh, the top two in his sights. He cannot afford to lose that number one plate. Only a couple of rounds of this championship left, and he definitely doesn't want to lose out to his two arch rivals there from Gauteng. Wolves and Faree. And it uh, looks like absolutely amazing ride here from him so far. Raiden Wolves has had a phenomenal season so far. Here we go. Possible change up for second place. Wolves hanging on there. The fast house man just, just at the front end. But look in the background. Looks like a rider might have gone down. And as he comes into the big turn, let's have a look and see if it's going to be Faree who's in second. Yes, it is. But look there, right on his tail. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Kretzman is now onto the back end of the triple five. The well, number one bike all over 555. And it's, uh, I think it's days are numbered there. Rider down, is that Cassie Van Sal? By the looks of things, could be. Oh, apologies for the moms and dads running side by side, trying to get through. They all trying to, of course, help out the riders who have gone down. 47, Chloe Udendahl out there. Good run there from the young lady rider. Superb stuff to see her up and running. Definitely a star of the future in the ladies' class. Is there a change up in the lead? Uh, no, not yet, but nearly. Here we go. Possible change up for the lead. And you can see that, uh, unfortunately, Maxwell Faree's dropped down to third place. He's lost out there to Kretzman. Kretzman now has his eyes firmly on the prize. Looking for a way through on Wolves, and Wolves keeping him honest. Wolves at this point still hangs on, but Kretzman is looking for an inside line. Is he going to be able to do it here? Into that tree turn he is. Oh, my God. The high line is definitely the better one to be on. See, Trenton Kretzman is definitely looking for an opportunity here to get past. He now goes inside again, using slightly different lines here. It makes up a little bit of ground. 47, Chloe, as I said, super run here from our young lady rider. Keeping it upright and staying in the mix. She's into the top 10 there in these treacherous conditions. Here's a possible change up for the lead. No. Once again, Raiden Wolves shuts the door. Now Kretzman comes on the inside, cuts back and takes the lead. There it is. So back to the front there for the number one plate where he's been almost all season long. Almost untouchable as well. And coming to the checkered flag, it's going to be Kretzman who's going to take the win. Kretzman's going to hang on only just. 
You can see it's not too far away there. Oh, we just caught the chicken flag in time as well. With Wills on his tail and coming through there for third place. A card charge from Free, nearly getting through there for a top two. Pensman taking the overall victory, of course, ahead of Raiden Wills and Maxwell Free. Brody Bircher in fourth place ahead of Ross McKenzie. Ashton Rawlings, and a good run there from Josh Newman to finish up in the top seven. We headed down a pit lane to try and get an interview there with Trenton Kretzman. As you can see, just absolutely broken from how hard he had to work out on track. Well done, young man. Just shows you how hard these youngsters had to work today and how cold it is. Trying to warm those hands up again to get him ready. Oh, man. Right, let's move on to the 125s. These guys with slightly bigger wheels and possibly a little bit more experience. But all of that experience is going to be called here big time today. It's not an easy track to race on. And they're going to find out just how difficult and how more difficult it's got after a couple of heats of racing. Down towards turn one. He's going to have the inside line. See Deegan. Oh, Deegan. Bloomfield on the inside trying to find a way through there, but he didn't quite squeak through. It was Luke Grundy who hits the front. So Luke Grundy leads things out as they come over the cannabis jumps and down into turn two. On his tail is the number one plate there of John Omlimi. And John Omlimi, what a start. He goes banging bars there, I think, with Ethan Hoffman. Miguel Duvall also trying to squeeze through there. Nice slow-mo of him. Oh, and he's sideways over that second jump, trying to avoid the other two riders who are trying to get through on the inside of him. So uh, it is uh, fourth place there for Duvall as they come down into Thunder Valley for the first time. Omlimi hits the front. He's got a head now of Grundy. and going to try and open up a margin that he can control. Grundy sitting in second place at this point in time. And then you can see uh, slowly but surely Miguel Duvall closing on the four bike there of Ethan Hoffman. Hoffman going to try and keep him out. Miguel Duvall all over the back end of Hoffman. As they come down onto the bottom end and into Thunder Valley again at the bottom section of the circuit, right down by the river. That's where things are probably the coldest. And just behind that, you've got Baron Tatoy, Q and Conway, Blake Young. Callan Broski didn't get quite the start he wanted, but he's now moving himself up into a top seven. And it's Garrick Henley, who's now just inside the top ten, just ahead of Bryce Peterson. That's how they all start to come flying through as they head down towards Gurney. Who is who in the zoo? The only time we get to see them is when they ride away. You can see the back of their jerseys, not that too difficult to spot. Grundy, though, ahead of Hoffman, and a rider down. Oh, that looks like a big one. It's one of the Yamaha riders. It could be Brees Romans, I think. Brees Romans having a, holding that shoulder, possibly uh, an elbow or a wrist injury there for him. Hopefully not too bad, and he can get back up and riding, or possibly in time for uh, the next one. But that's what can happen in these conditions. One wrong move, and it can go horribly wrong. Miguel Duval trying to use some of that international experience he's gained over the last couple of seasons, having been on, on international duties on a few occasions. Grundy just clo closing things down. Luke Grundy, of course, definitely wants to uh, be the man at the front end and uh, beat out Amlini. Hoffman starting to cook that buck. Look at the bucks. Look at how those radiators are having to work double time now to try and keep the, the bucks cool. Oh, off the track. 37, where are you off to, buddy? Kieran Conway, keep it on the right-hand side. He eventually gets back on track. But Conway just getting forced off the jump there with a little mistake as he landed. Oh, another mistake here as well from the 12 bike. That's Bryce Peterson just trying to find a line. Which line? Where would you like to go, Bryce? There's no lines out there, buddy. <laughs> we'll give it to you for that, but Try hard and don't give up. That is exactly what all of these riders are doing. Bloomfield now just outside of the top 10. Triple four coming through there as well as Tristan DeRoe. DeRoe doing dual duties today, this, uh, this weekend. Doing a superb job in both of his classes. And he's just outside of that top 10 as well as Tristan DeRoe. Now we can see further back. That's the rider who went down. So he was able to get back up and riding. I think that might have been Eben van Rooyen, actually, to be very honest with you. Now, top three coming into uh, effect. Uh, Ethan Hoffman trying to close things down on the second place. Grundy. Grundy has not been able to uh, catch the front end. And Emlimi controls it. Miguel Duval slowly but surely closing in. Four-way battle. And there's only about 15 seconds between them. That's brilliant stuff, considering the conditions that we're racing in. Can't believe that they're able to run the pace that they're running here. Mimi's finding some really good laps in here. And I think he's just found a rhythm and possibly the right lines to put that KTM of his into. Which allows him to control things from the front end. He's also had a bit of international experience. Remember, he's been training hard there with the boys from Uganda. And Grundy's been training hard. He's turned his whole season around. He's loving life in the wet. I haven't seen Luke Grundy in this kind of form for a long time. And it's always great to see a rider stepping up and uh, turning his, uh, his luck around ever so slightly. The 12 biker Bryce Peterson has also turned his luck around. He's been able to get back up and riding. And he's now into the top 10. Top two, though. And there's no answer just yet from Grundy. But maybe he's waiting for a little bit later on in the race. Doesn't want to show his cards too soon. Looks like we might have lost Ethan Hoffman and Miguel Duvall. And they've dropped back into the clutches of the 101 of Baron Tatoy. So this is how difficult things can be. But if you look at John Omlini, 
is it really that difficult? Because he seems to be in a class of his own, and the, his fitness is definitely helping him out of it. Rider down again, once again, Evan van Rooyen. The same man who's been down three or four times, and there's been a couple of riders like that today. He's not the only one. Do you think that change of surface flag is... No, it's not, it looked like a change of surface flag because it's so dirty. <laughs> it's actually a yellow flag waving there to warn the riders of the down. Rider just around the corner. Coming through there, Kieran Conway, Blake Young. And it looks like uh, Callan Broski also taking a bit of strain here in the wet. There have been a couple of occasions in the regional championships where there has been some wet conditions. But out front, no one is going to catch him, Limi. He's just set the pace and had everything in control since he came through turn two. He didn't quite get the whole shot. It's the only thing he didn't get right today. But he definitely is in with a chance now of the win. And Grundy, controlling things from second as well, has got a nice margin over Ethan Hoffman and Miguel Duval. Baron Tatoy is a big factor, though. And I think Miguel Duval has been over the bars. He's dirty, and he's also lost the goggles. He's got his goggles over his bar there, so uh, he's definitely had it down somewhere. And that's why I'm saying Baron Tatoy could be a big factor here. Triple four, Tristan DeRoe. Running in the one 2 fives for the first time this season, so still getting used to the slightly bigger bike. Chicken flag come out and <laughs> one hand off, one foot off. <laughs> that's not styling. That's just for balance as Mlimi goes across the line to take the win. Mlimi takes it from Grundy. Huffman in third place. Miguel Duval in fourth ahead of Baron Tatoy. It's Kieran Conway, Blake Young and Callan Broski. The overalls for 125s. Let's catch up now with John Mlimi. Um, yeah, it was really tricky out there. Um, it's always fun playing in the mud. Um, got off to a good start. I was mid-pack. Um, really made my way to the front real quick. Um, yeah, I managed to get in front, uh, put in a few good laps to stretch it out. And uh, yeah, it was just managing the race um, from there and managed to bring it home in the heat one. One heat of the day only due to the treacherous conditions. But join us next week as we catch up with MX1, 2 and 3 and the ladies for a rewind of what happened down at Thunder Valley. All this national motocross action is proudly brought to you by TRP Distributors, Cannabis Energy Drink, and their associate sponsors.